Hello, this is Marla Dalton, Executive Director and CEO of the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases, or NFID. Welcome to Contagious Chronicles by NFID, featuring insights from trusted experts on the latest developments in infectious disease prevention and treatment. Joining me today are two esteemed colleagues and NFID leaders, Medical Director Dr. Bob Hopkins and Spokesperson Dr. Bill Schaffner, to talk with us about norovirus, the leading cause of vomiting and diarrhea and foodborne illness in the U.S., which affects up to 21 million people each year and is currently spreading across parts of the country. So thanks so much for joining me, Bob and Bill, to talk about norovirus. Happy to be here, Marla. Hello, Marla. Good to be with you and Bob. So, Bob, let's start with the basics. What is norovirus and what are the typical symptoms? Marla, norovirus is a family of viruses that we've known about for a long time. These viruses commonly cause sudden onset of vomiting and diarrhea, sometimes associated with body aches and fever. And commonly, people will call these symptoms things like food poisoning or acute gastroenteritis, or a stomach bug. Really, most of these are not food poisoning. This is norovirus, and it's a problem that we see every year. So, Bill, how does norovirus spread, and how long is someone typically contagious? Norovirus is an extraordinarily contagious virus. It only takes a few viral particles to initiate an infection, so it is spread very readily. Certainly, it can be spread from one person to another through direct contact. But this virus can also survive on environmental surfaces for a period of time. So you can literally pick it up on the tips of your fingers from a contaminated surface. And then when you touch your mouth or your nose, you can infect yourself. And since it only takes a few viral particles to initiate an infection, you're likely to become sick. Now, this virus can also get into some water systems. That's rather rare, but it can also get into food if the food preparer happens to be infected with the norovirus. So there are a number of ways this virus can get you if you don't watch out. Bob, can you share why we're now seeing an increase in the number of cases in the U.S.? And is norovirus usually seasonal? Norovirus can occur any time of the year, but most norovirus outbreaks, particularly here in the United States, are between November and April. It's often a wintertime illness. Some years where we have a new strain of norovirus emerges, this can increase the rate of disease by as much as 50 percent. What is an average year? An average year means that we have somewhere around 900 deaths due to norovirus, about 110,000 hospitalizations, over half a million emergency department visits, and over 2 million outpatient visits, most in children. 20 million illnesses is a common year. It causes a lot of disease in our population. Bob, this is a virus that has gotten the moniker, the cruise ship virus, but you certainly don't have to go on a cruise to get this viral infection. Bill, how concerned should we really be about it? I think we ought to know that it's out there. What we can do to try to prevent ourselves from acquiring this virus is steady hand washing and being very careful about our food preparation. Those are the things that we can do. And goodness, if you're around anyone who is sick, stay away from them. And if you are sick, please stay away from others. And Bob, what can we do to prevent norovirus infections? And how long is someone typically ill with the virus? Washing your hands is absolutely critical. And that means washing your hands with soap and water. The antibacterial hand sanitizers we use all the time really don't do much to reduce our risk from norovirus. This is a time where soap and water is important. It's also important to recognize that if you cough or you sneeze or you breathe or you have vomited in an area, you may have a few of those virus particles that have landed on a surface. The best way to eliminate the virus from the surface is to bleach that surface. By bleaching, I don't mean just wipe it over with bleach, but you wipe the bleach on the surface, you wait a few moments before you wipe it away, and then use soap and water again. 
it's really important that you not prepare food when you're ill and for at least a few days afterwards. The numbers that I've seen is that you can continue to shed the virus for as much as a week or two after you've had a, a norovirus infection. So really be careful about food preparation. Really be careful about being around others when you're sick with a stomach virus, which is most likely norovirus. Bob, you've told us all those good things we should do. Let me give you an anecdote about what you should not do. It turns out that a group of people were going to a club to play bridge, the card game. And one of the players got out of their car, was walking through the parking lot, going to the club, when they suddenly vomited. And norovirus can appear just like that, sudden vomiting. They gathered themselves together and managed to go into the club and did what they shouldn't. They went in and played bridge. So you know what I'm going to say. There was an outbreak among those bridge club participants within the next 48 to 72 hours. What that person should have done is turn around, get back in their car, and go home and take care of themselves. So don't go out and about while you're sick. And even more, it reemphasizes, Bill, the, the message that we all learned when we were little, don't put our hands in our eyes, our nose, or our mouth, in case you picked up that viral particles. Bill, is there anything else besides the hydration factor that somebody who gets sick should think about? Are there any treatments that are available? Marla, there's no specific anti-norovirus, antiviral drug available. However, what you mentioned is critically important. The vomiting and the diarrhea can be very substantial. And in that, you lose a lot of fluid. So rehydration is very important. The persons we're most concerned about getting more severe disease because of the hydration are very young children. We sometimes underestimate how dehydrated quickly they can become. And older, frail people who cannot keep up with their fluid intake. Those are the folks we most often see hospitalized. Now, that said, after two or three days of misery, almost everybody gets better. As, as Bob said, there are some deaths each year that are associated with norovirus, unfortunately. And I think it's important that we also add that drugs to suppress nausea and vomiting or the diarrhea are probably not the best course. The, really, the most important thing is to get plenty of fluids into you. Remember that many of those drugs to suppress nausea and vomiting can make you sleepy, which may reduce your intake of fluids, which is so critically important with this illness. So before we close, I'll ask each of you if you have any other closing thoughts or advice, and I'll start with you, Bob. We're going to come back to my favorite expression, Marla, wash your hands. <laughs> Stay home when you're sick, please. Bravo, first to Bob's suggestion about hand washing. But looking to the future and perhaps not too distant future, there are vaccine scientists working to create norovirus vaccines, and some of them are actually starting in clinical trials. So perhaps in the not too distant future, we'll have some good news in these contagious chronicles. Thanks again for your valuable insights, Bob and Bill. And thank you all for tuning in to Contagious Chronicles. If you have a burning question for an NFID expert, please submit it via the online form at nfid.org contact. Your question may just show up in a future episode of Contagious Chronicles. <laughs>